Last week was a big week. It was engine part one, which means this week is engine part two. We figured out what was wrong with this and we started to get it out. This week, does it come out? Stay tuned. Roll the intro. Hey everyone, it is Josh at Motorcycle and Power Sports News, and we're back this week for the second installment of the engine section of Project X. Now, last week, if you remember right, we had some compression issues. It was brought up when we did the oil test with it, so that tells me there's probably some ring issues. We've already got pistons, rings, and cylinders waiting to go on this thing, so that's great. That being said, we've got to pull this lump of aluminum the rest of the way out of the quad here, and we're gonna get her torn down today. So, we're gonna get the clutch part, we're gonna flip this thing around so that way you guys have a better view after that. We're hopefully gonna pull it right back out. So we took a minute and we flipped her around so that way we've got good light over here for you. Plus it's a little easier for me to work on this side. Next up, since we've already got the belt off, we are gonna pull the clutch assembly off here. So there's a 16 millimeter here and then Polaris actually makes a special tool for it, but I'm gonna show you a way that you can do it with just a couple of bucks at the hardware store also. So the clutch is actually basically an interference fit to go on the, the crankshaft there. That being said, there's a simple way to do it. Polaris makes a clutch puller setup. If you get some all thread, you cut it to about five inch length here. You also need a three quarter inch fine thread bolt. What you're going to do is the all thread that goes in there is basically a rod that, to push on and the bolt is what's going to push on it. That is going to help pull the clutch off. Now that we've got the primary drive off on this, it's time to pull the secondary off on it. Simply put, remove this bolt. It slides right off. So now that the primary and secondary drives are off, what I want to do is I want to take some time and I want to pull any electrical connections like the uh, temperature for that. I want to pull the upper radiator hose off. I'll probably pull the intake manifold off, something else. This is not a lightweight piece, so I'm actually probably going to pull the starter off too. It's a couple of pounds that I can save with that. Once we're done with all those connectors, is we're going to pull this section of frame out. That makes it a lot easier to get the engine out, so that way you're not trying to finagle it. Pull the motor mounts, then we're ready to stick it on a bench. As we were pulling the front mount apart, it came, well, apart. Same thing in the back, it's starting to turn outside of the mount because we're gonna have to pull this whole assembly off instead of un just undoing the mounts. With that, we know at least two out of the four motor mounts need replaced. Probably not a bad idea to do all four just to make sure that this thing isn't going anywhere once we put it back in. Including the stator, we've got everything disconnected, and I'll pull the stator off with the engine here. Remember, the stator disconnects from up front here, a couple of zip ties. We also pulled the dipstick tube off because that sticks out the side there, and the last thing we want to do is bend that. Typically, especially if the four-wheeler's on the ground, I'm going to suggest you either A, get a friend, use a chain ho hoist or something like that, but it's at a good height. I'm going to go ahead and stick it over on the, wor the uh, workbench there. Now that it's sitting up here on the workbench, we can actually start tearing into this thing. That being said, there's a few things that I'll go over with this. 
These are actually pretty famous for bolts breaking off when you go to try and take off the exhaust manifold. We soaked it down with penetrating oil. We're gonna try and loosen them up and see how they work. If not, we're gonna apply a little bit of heat to those. So that's something that you always wanna be aware with and that's why I pulled it off with the exhaust manifold on because I didn't wanna take a chance of breaking it off there. If we can heat it, we need to heat it, we'll go ahead and do that. From there, we're gonna pull off the rocker arm cover and we're gonna then get the cylinder head off because once again, we're doing a full top end on this. In pulling the exhaust off, there's a little something here, but when I look at the bottom, it is cracked from here all the way back. So we're gonna need to look at getting a new exhaust manifold for this. Good thing we're taking it apart. Wasn't really making all that much noise and you don't see much black around here. So next up, we're gonna pull the valve cover off. surprisingly clean, which is a great sign for the bottom end of this. We know top end wise, there's some sealing issues, but for the bottom end, anytime you get an engine that's this clean inside, that bodes pretty well. Next off, we're gonna go ahead and pull the rock arm assemblies off, so that way we can pull the head off after that. Now, in pulling the rock arm assemblies off, the big thing that I always suggest is making sure that you mark which way everyone goes so you can install them in the same place. Same goes for the push rods. As you pull those out, you always wanna make sure you reinstall them back in the place where they were initially. We're gonna pull this valve train assembly apart. We're gonna keep track of it all and make sure that way when we go to put it back together, all goes in the same place. Valve train's off, all the head bolts are out. Let's see if the head comes off and it does. Now what's interesting is we still have the fitting from the uh, compression tester in there, but if you look, there's a little bit of carbon in inside of each one of these, but nothing terrible. Nonetheless, we're still replacing the, uh, the uh, jug there, so uh, we'll get that off next here. look at the edge of the piston here, you can see that there's some wear there. Once again, doesn't look excessive, but you can definitely see that these are in there. As I clean up this side, when you compare the two, there's a little bit of a difference there. Um, once again, the fact that the rings are able to move around in here, that's a good sign, but we're doing the full top end on this. so. We're gonna go ahead and get the pistons off and start working from there. There is a circlip, there's a channel in here and there's a circlip in that channel. And that's what holds the uh, wrist pin in between the two sides of the piston. Makes it, makes it so it can't escape one side. So what you need to do is you need to get your pick in here and hook underneath part of the circlip and then pop one edge of the circlip out. From there, you can push the piston out from there, you can push the pin out to one side and then pull the piston right off the connecting rod. So now that we've got the wrist pin out, got the piston off, I typically shove the pin back in and then I'll put the circlip back in because if you ever need to go back and look at it, it's always handy to have. Plus, it's good to look at the wear patterns and stuff like that and have that as a reference. So when we open these up, there's, like I said, the piston, there's two compression rings, and then there is your oil sealing ring. So the two compression rings will go in the top groove. 
these are labeled as such in terms of where they go. So this one says first, this one says second, and both of them label as to which end is the top. In a lot of cases, and you can see on the end of this, there's actually a chamfer on this edge inside here. And that's why this needs to go in with that as the top, as that chamfer helps it seed into the back of the piston here. So on oil rings, this is the, there's actually three separate components to the oil ring setup. Now this, there is a catch back here, and that's what the ring will sit on top of and sit against back here. So what we'll want to do, because this has to go behind both the top and bottom thin oil rings here, we're going to want to put this on first. And very simply, just wraps around the piston like that. Now, whenever you get the ring in, the thing that I always do is I always make sure everything moves nice and free. The other thing, check where you have the gap, the end gap for the ring. I always go 180 degrees from that is where I put the other gap in the ring then. Here we go. So the other part of this that I always like to check out, Bronco sent us a complete cylinder for this. Coated inside, has a great crosshatch pattern, ready to go. That's one of the things that I love about it. I do usually throw a ring in and check the ring end gap to make sure we're in the right spot with that. There are all sorts of fancy squaring tools to make sure that the ring isn't in the cylinder cockeyed. My favorite ring squaring tool is just use a piston. From there, we're going to use our feeler gauges to make sure that we've got the right end gap here. If it's too loose, obviously we stand a chance to lose some compression as it leaks past. If it's too tight, what can actually happen is, is as things warm up, the tips of the ring will end up touching and pushing each other, and it can actually take the top of the piston and cut the head right off. So with the piston in there, I've got my feeler gauges out. It's supposed to be between 10 and 35 thousandths is what the allowable clearance is. This, I can stick the 10 in there and it drags just a little bit. I go to stick the 11 in there and it does not fit. So that tells me we are right at 10 thousandths. We're actually right at the tight end of that clearance, which is good. We're gonna check the rest of the rings I'm going to put the piston on the rod. We're going to get ready to go. Since I have the oil rings, the gaps at the sides, I'm going to take the compression rings and I'm going to put one gap here and one gap here. Now, the other thing that I want to point out, and I'll point this out again as we go to install this, this has EX and an arrow pointed this way. That means the piston is meant to go in with this facing towards the front of the engine or the exhaust side of the engine. Now that's partially because of skirt design, that's also because of the valve cutouts and things of that nature, but make sure that you pay attention to that when you go ahead and put that together. As you go to put rings on, we've got the second ring is the one that we're going to start with here. And you want to be careful because if you try and expand these too far, you can break them. So it's put the start the ring down in the groove and very carefully pull that around 
Make sure it'll move a little bit. Make sure that there's no drag or anything like that on it. Now we're gonna spin it around. We're gonna do the same thing for the top ring. Make sure, once again, where it says top, you've got that side up. As we get ready to put everything together, the biggest thing is, is you never want an engine to start dry. And it takes a couple of seconds for the oil to work its way through, especially because we've got the engine out, we've got all the oil out of it, we're replacing the filter and everything like that. So as soon as we start it, it's gonna be dry. Now, normally oil has been coating the inside of the engine, but as I said, because we have it all apart, it's not gonna be that way. So we have to do it manually. Biggest thing that I always like to do is take a cap and make sure that you've got oil inside the piston here and also a coating on the wrist pin. On top of that, make sure that the connecting rod gets a fresh coat also. That way you've got a fresh coat, a new oil, ready to go before you ever start it. So now we've got the piston pin in, the wrist pin in. Let's get the circ clip in. These aren't always easy, so prepare for some swearing. We're gonna go ahead and put the gasket on. We're then gonna put a little bit of oil inside the cylinder so that way the pistons aren't starting up dry. Then we're gonna put the cylinder down over top of the pistons and these are a little bit tricky because you have to kind of compress the rings as you're putting the cylinder on. So when I open up the gasket kit, we've got two gaskets that look somewhat similar. This is the base gasket. This is the gasket that goes between the jug and the cylinder head. Now the main way to tell them apart is the fact that the base gasket really just has to seal oil and coolant in and not anything that's really under high pressure. The head gasket is on a much harder, thicker material because that is what has to seal in combustion pressures inside in between the jug and the cylinder head there. So we're gonna go ahead and lay this gasket on top. We've already got all this cleaned up. When you put this on, make note, because of the dowel pins here, two holes are bigger than the other two holes. And that's how that's supposed to go on to make sure it sits over those dowels. And we're in a good spot there. Putting these on is sometimes a little bit tricky because, well, you've got two pistons that have to go in at the same time and you can't really use a ring compressor. Now, there is a bit of a taper down here at the bottom of the cylinder to help get things started. It's a process, just go slow with it, work things on easily, and make sure that you're putting the cylinder on and not cocking it one way or the other. Now that we've got the jugs on, the thing that I always like to do is I always like to make sure that we can turn very easily. And we can. That being said, it's a great thing to check every step of reassembly on an engine so that way you don't get eight steps ahead and suddenly you find out you've got an issue. Find the issue as soon as you stumble across it. We've got this ready to go. Now, the next thing is, is we need to replace the valves and we need to get the cylinder head cleaned up. And that's where we're gonna pick up next week. So make sure to check back in, make sure you follow along. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys out on the trail.
next week, we should be getting close to it.